الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم وملقي التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم ذي الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم فالحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا والحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تبارك اسم ربك ذي الجلال والإكرام رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين First of all, it's an honor to be here at the East London Mosque and I want to share with you that I have a special love for the city of London. Every time I get a chance, I come here. More often than not, I am here without telling anyone. And the thing that I love about the city the most is the Muslims of the city. And um, it, is, it is something special that you have here. There's an energy even among the youth here that have a zeal to serve this deen, to commit themselves to this deen that is unprecedented in the Western Muslim world. I've been to you know, countries like Australia, all over Canada, all over the United States, uh, many other parts of the world, and I haven't seen the kind of energy and the kind of enthusiasm that young people have towards their deen that I see here. Today's khutbah, in any case, I wanted to share with you some things about, uh, uh, something that we recite all the time, something that we say all the time, and we overlook, I would argue, all the time. And that is the gift of Allah that He revealed to all of us, and that is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There is so much that can be said about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, but I hope to share a few things with you today. The first of them is obviously the most common that you might be familiar with is in the name of Allah. That's how it begins, in the name of Allah. We'll get to Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim in a little bit. But when you say in the name of Allah, it's the Arabic word ism that has been translated as name. But actually the Arabic word ism comes from the original wasam. And wasama in Arabic as a verb means two things. It means a mark, some kind of brand, like sometimes they would have animals, Anybody's horse, it could be any, it's a, there's a lot of white horses, and it, is it mine or is it yours? So they would put a brand on the horse. So now I know this one's mine. So it's a mark that distinguishes this horse from every other horse. Similarly, there are twins. I don't know which, is this Abdullah or Abdul Karim? I don't know which one. One of them has a birthmark. That's his wasam. A mark that distinguishes someone. That you can't confuse them with anybody else now. That's actually one of the meanings of wasam. And the other meaning of wasam is actually com comes from wasama. And from it you get words like wasim and wisam, which means beauty. In other words, not only is there a mark, but it's a mark of beauty. Those are two things that come within that, that word. When we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we're acknowledging something about Allah. That every one of His qualities, everything that He does, is something that's unique to Him. It cannot be confused with anyone else. The way Allah shows mercy, the way Allah guides, the way Allah provides, the way Allah plans, the way Allah does anything that He does is unique to Him, it cannot be compared. That is His unique mark. That's the first thing. 
But the second thing also is that everything Allah does, whether you understand it and I understand it or not, has beauty in it. Everything Allah does has beauty in it. And that's just inside when we just use, invoke the name ism. But now let's take this a step further. When we say, in the name of Allah, instead of just saying, you're just mentioning Allah, just calling on Allah, but actually invoking the name of Allah and actually by invoking the name, the uniqueness of Allah and the beauty of all of the qualities of Allah, we're actually, what, like Imam Al-Alusi rahimahullah commented, Al-Ba'u lil isti'ana, that you're asking Allah's help. When you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you're actually asking Allah's help. But human beings need different kinds of help. When you're sick, you need someone to cure you. When you're tired, you need someone to help you. You know, when you're confused, you need someone to clarify for you. When you don't know, you need someone to educate you. When you're lost, you need someone to guide you. It's not one kind of help. If you're hungry, you don't need to be educated right now, you need to be fed. It's a different kind of help. So when you ask Allah for help, then at a different occasion, you need a different kind of help. And of course, every one of Allah's names provides a different kind of help. When Allah calls Himself Al-Hadi, the one who guides, then of course the help He will give us that He'll guide us. When He calls Himself the provider, Al-Razaq, Al-Raziq and Al-Razaq, the one who provides over and over again, then obviously he's, in that name, He's going to be giving me provision. When He calls Himself Dhul Quwwat Al Mateen, the one who has extended might, extended power, then I need strength, I'm weak. And I'm going to call on Allah's power to grant me some of that power myself, so I can accomplish what I need to do. So every one of Allah's names gives us a different kind of help. But when I wake up in the morning, and I'm just getting out of bed, and out of my mouth comes Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, just like that, just like that I just say, I don't think about which name do I need right now. Do I need Allah to give me the strength to get up? Do I need Allah to guide me this morning? Do I need Allah to, you know, to help me plan my day? Do I, I need Allah to provide me halal rizq? Do I need Allah to provide me peace in my family and security? Which name of Allah should I call on? And it is the gift of Allah that by using just the word ism, it is all of the names of Allah, all of the unique qualities of Allah, all of the beautiful things about Allah that you included just inside the word ism, whether you thought of all of those names or not, this is the mercy of Allah. I could not have thought of all of the things that I need from Him. Because I don't need one thing, I need too many things. I'm in too much need. And so I can't even think of all of those names. وَلِلَّهِ you know, أَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا He says. To, for Allah, they're the most beautiful names. Call Him by all of those beautiful names. But how many people are going to learn all the names of Allah? Not everybody will know all the names of Allah. But we need all of them. So Allah gave us a gift. When we say Bismillah, just Bismillah, we've already called upon all of Allah's names. The one you will ever learn, and the one you will never learn, all of them have been included. SubhanAllah. And that's a gift of Allah Azza wa Jal when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now, the second thing on this point, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Sometimes to appreciate what Allah does for you and me, because what He does is unique. Sometimes it's healthy to make a comparison how we deal with each other. There's a father, or a mother even, and she pours her love out on her child. She takes care of this child even before the child is born. This kid is inside her stomach, causing her pain, you know, destroying her body from within, and all she does is make dua for him. When will you ever find another human being, all you do is cause them pain. Every day goes by, the womb gets heavier and heavier. Now she's throwing up even more and more and more. Food starts tasting like paper. She can't even sit down straight. Her back hurts all the time. She's even hurting when she's sleeping. She has to con, and she's, she's worried about her, and she's hungry all the time because the baby takes all the food. And it doesn't even taste good for her to eat. This creature causes her pain upon pain upon pain. Wahnan ala wahan, kama yaqulu al Quran. Subhanallah. Weakness on top of weakness, burden on top of burden. And yet all she does is her love keeps increasing. Her love doesn't go down, it keeps increasing. It doesn't say, enough already child. I had enough, I've been dealing with you for six months. There's three more months to go. She doesn't do that. Her du'as start increasing. She comes to the imam and says, which surah can I recite so my baby can hear it? You know? And then the baby comes out and almost kills her. Almost kills her. She bleeds almost to death. And instead of, when will you ever have someone that bleeds you? That almost kills you? And the first thing you want to do is take care of them and hug them and feed them. That's your mother. That's what she does. And that's just what she did at birth. What the love that she's given you, the support that she's given you, even when you're an adult, so many of you, there's no one you can talk to and you'll talk to your mother. There's no one who will understand you, your mother will understand you. 
There's no one who will feel your pain, your mother will feel your pain. That's not just when we were babies, even when you're 50 years old, it doesn't matter. And that mother, somebody goes to her, the son goes to her and says, Mom, you're so great. You make such good roti. Please help me. And the mother's thinking, that's all I'm good for? I've done nothing else for you but make roti? That's the one thing that came in your mind? All the other sacrifices I made? I took, you know, five different trains and three different buses to get a job so you can go to college and all you can thank me is you made roti the other day? That's all that came in your mind? How ungrateful are you? She doesn't say it, but she feels it. She doesn't say it. She still loves you. But you know, you and I, no matter how hard we try, we can never acknowledge the goodness of our mother. We can't do it. If we were to call on Allah with one name, imagine you called on Allah, Ya Razzaq. Bismi Razzaq. You know, I just call on Allah the name Razzaq. That's it. You know, then Allah, is, you're only appreciating what about Allah that He provided for you. But you didn't appreciate that He guides you. You didn't appreciate that He protects you. You didn't appreciate that he, you know, he secures you and gives you good people in your life. You didn't appreciate that He gives you knowledge. He didn't appreciate that he, gave you, you made, he made you Muslim. That He gave you your health. That He gave you your job. You didn't appreciate any of those things. You just reduced everything about Allah to one of the things He does. One of them. And Allah kept us from reducing Allah Himself subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's offensive. We wouldn't even know. He taught you what you couldn't have even known. We would have even been praising Allah and it would have been offensive because it's just not enough. So he gave us Bismillah. He gave us this phrase. And now when you, when you call on that phrase, the believer is supposed to become filled with gratitude. We're supposed to be overwhelmed in how much and how many ways Allah helps us. In how many ways Allah provides us. There are no other relationships like this one. Every, you know, I go to my teacher for knowledge. You know, I go to my parents for support. And when I'm young, for, for provision. You know, I go to my spouse for emotional support and, my, and love. I go to different people for different things. But to Allah, you go to Him for all things. You go to Him for everything. There's not one thing that is missing when you and I turn to Allah. So that's the first part of the equation. Bismillah. But then Allah didn't stop there. Even actually, I want to share with you some things about the word Allah. Our ulama had a long debate in our history. What is the origin of the word Allah? Does the word Allah come from ilah? And is it the combination of al-ilah? Al-ilah. Or is it a name of Allah that belonged to Allah from before Arabic and before all languages? It's always been the name of Allah. There's been these two positions all across our history. And both of them have their evidences. But I want to share some things with you. Even if you say that this word belongs to, comes from the word ilah. Ilah is commonly translated someone to be worshipped. Al-ma'bud. Al-ma'bud. Al-ma'luh bi al ma'bud. But you know the word aliha, the verb in Arabic, it actually comes from love. The origin of the word faza'a ilayhi wa ahabbahu ashadd al hub it's, it's actually intense kinds of love. The old Arabs before Islam, they used to have 10 degrees of love. The lowest of them was hub. The lowest of the degrees of love was hub, and they would have 10 degrees. And the 10th one will kill you. You love someone so much, you become so obsessed that you can't even eat, you can't even sleep, you, you know, it just kills you. It's unhealthy. The ninth one, the ninth one actually is called wala or ala, from which the word ilah comes. And the word wala means a kind of love that when you have it, you don't feel pain. When you, don't, when you have it, you don't feel hunger. You don't feel sadness. It is taken, it, this love fills your appetite so much, there's no room left for anything else. There's no negative emotion left in your life because this ilah has filled it for you. When we call upon Allah by, calling, by saying Bismillah, we are expressing our love for Allah and acknowledging that if we truly have love for Allah, all of our problems are going to feel like nothing. We, we all have problems. Some of us have marriage problems. Some of us have problems with our children. Some of us have problems with money. Some of us have problems with health. Some of us have problems with extended family, friends. We have all kinds of problems. Some of you have legal problems. Some of you have business problems, immigration problems. There are so many problems in life. All you're doing all day, there are taxi drivers here that are driving around all day thinking about their problems. How much money do I have left? How am I going to pay for the next tuition fees for the child? Which uni are they going to go to? And all of it. That's all they're thinking about all day. 
When you call on Allah with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, know that Allah will remove the tension from your head. He'll get rid of it and He will replace it with a, with a reliance on Allah and everything will get sorted out. Everything will work out. Because you have this gift that came from the heavens. This, this thing you recite and I recite, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is not cheap. It's amazing. You know when it's used in a context? I, I, all of you know it's used in the beginnings of surahs every time. But the one time it's used in the middle is in the story of Sulaiman. Innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ever think about that? Sulaiman alayhi salam is going to transfer the throne of another queen thousands of miles in the blink of an eye. And he says, this is because of bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is what bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim can do. What is Allah teaching you and me? If Allah can do that when someone truly believes in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, then you and I have no reason to be pessimists left. A Muslim is not supposed to be depressed because he has this gift. You know, if you had, I'll tell you a secret. Think about this as an analogy. It'll help you, inshallah ta'ala. It helped me a lot. You have all these problems, money, health, family, you know, all these issues in your life. And they, don't, they only seem to be getting worse. They don't seem to be getting better. The arguments are getting more and more nasty and you know, you're just buried and buried and better, buried. You know, there, are, there are young men here, young women here that can't get married. You know, and the, 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 either the family doesn't agree or the guy is not right or the girl is not right or nothing is right. Or, you know, and is, is it even going to happen? She's getting older and older. The father's getting worried. How am I going to get my daughter married? All of these problems are happening. And imagine one day that somebody comes to you and says, here's an envelope. You can open it in 30 days. But I'll tell you, there's two million pounds in here for you. But you can only open it in 30 days. Okay? But it's in your hand already. You have it. Even if you don't have enough food for lunch, even if you don't have enough money to pay the electricity bill, you have nothing in your hand for 30 days, you're still poor. But you're the happiest man I've ever met. You're still walking around without shoes on the street. And I'm like, hey man, why are you so happy? <laughs> you don't know. 27 days. I'll let you know. Because you have a guarantee in your hand. You have a guarantee. And you, this, when, whenever you get depressed, whenever you feel really hungry, you just look at the envelope. 24 more days. You just, this thing has given you a guarantee that a better life is coming, isn't it? It's, it? All of your problems became small. No big deal. Because you have a guarantee. That is when you call on the name of Allah. That's a guarantee in your hand. It's worth more than a few million pounds, let me tell you. It's worth a lot more than that. And it's in your hand. It's just in your hand. You just got to believe in it, that's all. You know, somebody else could have the same paper and say, I don't believe it and rip it up. Never even open it. And be skeptical about it. You and I are believers. We believe in the power of Allah's names. And so I take you quickly to the next name. Of all of Allah's names, first of all, He invoked the one that makes us worship Him out of love. The word that comes from ilah. And even that name is so unique. Because the wasam already told you that there's a uniqueness to Allah, right? You know, in Arabic, this is a little bit of an Arabic thing, but I'll try to make it easy for you. You must have heard, if you have Arab friends or somebody speaking Arabic, when they call on someone, harfun nida hiya ya. You say, ya walad, ya rajul, ya kareem, ya abdullah. They say ya all the time when they call someone. When you say ya, you don't use al. You don't say ya al walad. If you want to use al, you say ya ayyuhal walad. You don't just say, Ya al walad, you say, Ya ayyuhal walad. Like Allah says, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, for example. Ya ayyuhal nabi. If you want to put alif lam there, al there, you have to say ayyuha, you can't just say ya. But if you don't say ya, you can say, Ya Musa, Ya Isa, Ya Zakariya, Ya Yahya. You know. In some argue, the word Allah has al in it. But we say, Ya Allah or no? We say it all the time. The name of Allah is so unique, you don't even do in Arabic what you do with the name of Allah anywhere else. Even the name of Allah is unprecedented. <laughs> Even the way it's pronounced, the, the Allah, when you say Allah, you don't say Allah anywhere else in Arabic. Even the way it's pronounced is unique. Even the way Allah gave us the gift of His name is to tell us you are dealing with someone like as no one else. He's like nobody else. He will help you like nobody else. He loves you like nobody else. He cares for you like nobody else. He remembers you like nobody else. He's always with you like nobody else. Everyone else will leave you. Everything else will leave you. Allah will never leave you. That's what he reminds you and me of. That's what he reminds you and me of. 
Now, there's a lot to talk about, like I said, but I, I will finish on time. I respect the fact that a lot of you have to get back to work and, and have other responsibilities. I have about five minutes left, so a few things I'll try and squeeze in about this beautiful phrase. The two names of Allah, all of His names that He could have included, you know, because He has the best of all names. But the two descriptions that He wanted us to know every time we do something, every time we call on all of His qualities, of them, two of them should come to the front of our mind. Meaning two of His qualities overshadow everything else. When you think of everything else about Allah, it is under these two. And those are Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. What incredible two names. Ar-Rahman simply means three things. It means that Allah's love and mercy and care is extreme. Mubalagha means it's beyond what you can imagine. It also means, number, so it's extreme, that's the first thing. The second thing is that it's immediate. The second thing is that it's immediate, which means you don't have to wait for it. It's happening right now. And the third of the meanings of when you, when you use fa'lan, that's the scary one, it's actually not permanent. It's extreme, it's immediate, but it's not necessarily permanent. When you say, for example, in Arabic, atshan, atshan means thirsty, thirst is not permanent. When you say jaw'an, jaw'an is extremely hungry, it's extreme, it's immediate, but it's not permanent. When you say ghatban, extremely angry, it's not permanent. Well, for some people it is, but yeah, for most people it's not permanent, you know. But the, the, the beauty of the Arabic language and the beauty of how Allah chose to describe Himself, this is a kind of mubalagha, even if it's temporary, it doesn't go away on its own. If you're thirsty, the thirst will not go away on its own until you use water. If you're hungry, hunger will not go away on its own until you eat food. If Allah is ar-Rahman, if Allah is excessively loving, excessively caring, excessively merciful, that extreme love, mercy and care will not go away ever until you remove it. Until you don't want it. Allah will never take it away. People don't want it sometimes. Rasulullah one time told the Sahaba, strangest thing, the Sahaba are sitting there and he looks at them and he says, Kullukum yadkhulul jannah illa man aba. So all of you are going to Jannah, except the one who refused. Why would? And even the Sahaba asked the same question that came in my head. Waman ya'ba minna ya Rasulullah? Who's gonna Who's gonna refuse? Why would we refuse to go to Jannah? He says, Man ata'ani dakhal al Jannah, waman abani fakadaba, man asani fakadaba. Whoever obeyed me, whoever came to me, because he's the he, he's the Bil Mu'minina Ra'uf al Rahim, he's the merciful messenger of Allah. Whoever came to me in obedience wanted to go to Jannah. Whoever forgot about me, disregarded me, he didn't want to go. You and I can remove ourselves from Allah's mercy. Allah will not close the door. We close the door. And sometimes you close the door for many years. Sometimes you close the door for many, many years. And then you open it. And when you open it, Allah doesn't say, Why did you close it? Get lost. I don't want you anymore. He doesn't do that. The door remains open. The doors of Allah's mercy and His care and His love remain open. The last of these names is Ar-Rahim. And as I leave you with Ar-Rahim, two things I want to share with you. Ar-Rahim actually fills the void of Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahim is a sifa mushabbaha, they say in Arabic, something that is permanent. So don't you worry. Allah will take care of you right now, immediately. And if you're worried about tomorrow, He'll take care of you tomorrow too. You know, it's human nature. If, you, if you're really hungry and your wife says to you, what do you want to eat next week? You say, forget it woman, what do we have right now? I don't care about next week, I'm starving right now. Once you, start, once you finish eating, and your stomach is full, then you say, so what are you saying about next week? You don't think about the future if you have a problem in the present. Once your present problem is solved, then you start thinking about the future. If you haven't paid the bill yet, then you're only thinking about the bill right now. The moment you pay the bill, you start thinking, what am I going to pay next month's bill? You think about the future. What did Allah do? Allah took care of your immediate need when He said, Ar-Rahman. And he took care of your future when he said Ar-Rahim. He took care of your future. Both of them. And in the right order. Because human beings, you love to rush. You love the things that you need right now. You're obsessed with them. Doesn't he know who he created? He gave me Ar-Rahman first, then he gave me Ar-Rahim. And so I leave you with the last of these many treasures of Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim is what they call in Arabic Shibhu Jumla. Innaha laysa Jumla. It's not a sentence. It's actually a, what's called in English grammar, a fragment. 
Okay, it's a piece of a sentence. For example, if I say in the car, in the car is not a sentence. If I say there's a person in the car, now that's a sentence. In the car, there are a lot of people. That's a sentence. But if you just say in the car, it's not a sentence. When you just say in Allah's name, that's not a sentence. That's an incomplete thought. There's no mubtada, there's no khaba, there's actually a muta'alliq, it's just a jar majroor, the Arabic students will know. There's no fi'l. Some, some grammarians, when the, when the mufassirun studied this ayah, they said, wow, this is incomplete. How do you complete it? There must be a fill in the blank. So they say it must mean abda'u bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim or abtadi'u bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I begin with the name of Allah. You might have seen some English translations that say I begin with the name of Allah. Even though the words I begin are not there. They're just not there. So the question is why aren't they there? And that's what I hope to share with you now. Allah Azza wa Jal in His wisdom, the one who allaman al-bayan, right? He taught us how to speak. He knows how to speak. When he wants to make a full sentence, he will make a full sentence. When he wants to give you half a sentence, he will give you half a sentence. We don't judge Allah's speech by our standards. Our speech is judged by Allah's standards. He's the one who taught us how to speak. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave us an incomplete statement on purpose. Because what you do next completes it. In the name of Allah, I eat. In the name of Allah, I get out of bed. In the name of Allah, I wash my face. In the name of Allah, I get in my car. Everything you do is actually completing Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is as though this beautiful gift of Allah was waiting to complete everything you do. It's the other way too. And now, and now you know what you understand? There's lazim and malzum. If you do anything without Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it's incomplete. This was a part of it. This is a part of the equation. It had to be. In small things and big things. And so, now that my time is up, inshallah ta'ala, at some other time perhaps I'll come and share with you one of the beauties of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the one surah where there's no Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Surah Al-Tawbah. But that's for another time, bi ibnillah ta'ala. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa khususan ala afdalihim wa khatam al-Nabiyyin محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا منقوطا